Jared Goff was traded because the Rams decided he was the player holding them back from winning a Super Bowl. The trade stung even more when the Rams did go on to win the Super Bowl with their new QB in just his first season there. So how did Goff go from being publicly called out by his old coach to being viewed as just a bridge quarterback to now leading the Lions on a historic playoff run? We're about to find out because this is what they aren't telling you about the rise, fall, and redemption of Jared Goff. Jared Goff grew up in Northern California as a huge 49ers fan. He loved Joe Montana and wears the number 16 because of him. Goff attended Marin Catholic High School and took over as the team's varsity starting quarterback his sophomore year. As an upperclassman, he led the team to a combined 25 and two record and even an appearance in the state title game. By the end of his high school career, Goff was a four-star recruit and ranked as the 15th best QB in the class of 2013 by 247 Sports. The most notable names ranked above him on that list were Josh Dobbs and Christian Hackenberg. Even though Goff was a four-star recruit, he only had four scholarship offers from Washington State, Fresno State, Boise State, and Cal, which I found very weird. How is a four-star recruit not getting more offers than that? And let's be honest, those aren't the best football schools. Goff ultimately committed to Cal and went on to be the first true freshman to start a season opener for the school. But things didn't not go as planned for the Golden Bears that season. The team went an abysmal 1-11. Despite the terrible record, Goff broke multiple Cal single season records, including passing yards in a season with 3,508. The next season, 2014, the Golden Bears still couldn't achieve a winning record, but improved to 5-7, and, and Jared Goff was a huge reason why. In September, he led his squad to a 59-56 OT win versus Colorado, a game in which he he had over 450 passing yards and seven, yes, seven touchdowns. Just a week later in the next game, Jared broke Cal's single game passing record by passing for 527 yards and five touchdowns in a win versus Washington State. Heading into his junior season, Jared Goff was named the number one QB prospect for the 2016 draft by Todd McShay. And Goff definitely lived up to the top QB hype that 2015 season. In a November game, Cal was down by 17 versus Arizona State at halftime. Jared then put the team on his back and led them to a comeback win by throwing for 542 yards and five touchdowns, breaking the school's single game passing record that he set the previous season. And guess what? Cal finally had a winning record, Goff's junior season, going eight and five and winning a bowl game for the first time since 2008. Goff ended his junior season with 4,714 passing yards and 43 touchdowns, which both broke the record for most by a Pac-12 player in a single season. After a record-breaking season, Jared Goff declared for the 2016 NFL Draft. Early in the pre-draft process, the majority of experts still projected Goff to be the first quarterback off the board. Even though Jared was ranked as the best QB in the draft, back in February, many didn't have him going number one overall that was projected to be Laramie Tunsil. Goff didn't test great at the combine in the physical tests like the 40 and vertical jump, but did do well in the quarterback drills. Just two weeks before the draft, the Rams traded up from the 15th overall selection to the first by sending a haul of picks to the Titans. The Rams were in need of a quarterback after starting both Nick Foles and Case Keenum the previous season, so it was clear the reason they traded up was to select Jared Goff. Draft day arrives and the Rams do indeed draft Goff first overall. To start the season, Jared was sitting on the bench learning behind a veteran starter Case Keenum. Heading into week 11 with the Rams sitting at 4-5, and five, head coach Jeff Fisher announced that the rookie would be taking over as the team's starting QB. But once Goff took over as the starter, things went south fast. Jared Goff did not win a single game his rookie season. In the seven games he played, he completed just 54% of his passes for 1,089 yards, five touchdowns, and seven interceptions. But the most troubling part was, Goff looked significantly worse out there than journeyman QB Case Keenum. It was really one of the worst rookie seasons we've seen from a QB. During the offseason, some even suggested the Rams should start Sean Mannion over him the following year. 
fire. As the losses piled up, Jeff Fisher was fired in the middle of the season. So the Rams needed to find a new head coach, but they did something that shocked almost everyone in the NFL. They hired Washington's offensive coordinator, Sean McVay, who was just 30 years old at the time. In the first game of his second season in the league, Goff looked like a totally different quarterback. In the Rams' week one win versus the Colts, he completed 72% of his passes for 306 yards, one touchdown, and no turnovers. His great play continued throughout the year, including two games with both 300 plus passing yards and four touchdowns. With the offensive combination of Goff and Gurley, the Rams won the NFC West with a record of 11 and five, snapping the organization's streak of 10 straight losing seasons. For the first round of the playoffs, the three seed Rams were set to face off with the six seed Falcons. This game marked the Rams' first playoff appearance since 2004. After being down 14-10 at halftime, LA's offense stalled in the second half and couldn't score more than three points, resulting in the Rams losing 26-13. Golf finished his second NFL season with 3,800 yards, 28 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. Despite Jared's play exceeding expectations in 2017, he wasn't given a lot of credit for the Rams' great season. That mostly went to Todd Gurley, who had over 2,000 yards from scrimmage and was the best running back in the league. Golf's play was also overshadowed by Carson Wentz, who went one pick after him in the draft and was having an MVP caliber season before tearing his ACL. Expectations were sky high for the Rams heading into 2018, as they held the second best odds to win the Super Bowl alongside the Steelers and Vikings. Golf's play continued to improve in his third NFL season. In a week five win versus the Vikings, he completed 78% of his passes for 465 yards, five touchdowns, and no turnovers. A few weeks later was what some call one of the greatest regular season games of all time, a face-off between the high-powered Rams and Chiefs offenses. With 247 left, the Rams got the ball at their own 25, down a score with no timeouts left. With 150 left, Goff threw a touchdown to give LA the lead, which they held on to to win 54-51. Jared had over 400 yards, five total touchdowns, and no interceptions in the dub. The Rams finished the regular season with a 13-3 record and were a two seed heading into the playoffs. Goff yet again put up the best numbers of his career, throwing for over 4,600 yards, 32 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. After a first round playoff bye, LA won 30-22 versus Dallas in the divisional round, which marked the first playoff win for both Jared Goff and Sean McVay. Up next was the NFC Championship game in one of the loudest stadiums in the league, the Superdome in New Orleans. Before the game even started, the Rams were at a disadvantage. Right before taking the field, the speaker in Goff's helmet wasn't working, so he had to use backup QB Sean Mannion's helmet on the first drive of the game, which ended with him throwing an interception. When Goff's helmet speaker did get fixed, he still couldn't hear the plays because of the crazy amount of noise from the fans in the stands. So the Rams staff had to put tape over his helmet ear holes to try and keep as much of the external sound out as they could. By the end of the first quarter, the Rams were down 13-0. Before half, Goff led the team on an 81-yard touchdown drive that put them down just three heading into the locker room. With 145 left in the game, the score was knotted at 20 and the Saints were in the red zone. Then, this controversial non-call happened on third down. The Saints ended up kicking the field goal and were up three with just over a minute and a half left in the game. Goff got the ball back and led the Rams from their own 25 to the Saints 30, where Zerline hit the game-tying field goal to force overtime. In OT, the Saints got the ball first, but Drew Brees threw an interception around midfield. So with excellent field position, the Rams were able to get close to field goal range. On fourth down, Greg the Leg Zerline trotted out to attempt a 57-yard game winner, which he nailed to send the Rams to the Super Bowl. In the biggest game of the season, the young Rams were set to face off with a Patriots dynasty team that's coach and QB had more Super Bowl wins than the Rams coach and QB had playoff wins. The game was super low scoring and at half, the Patriots were up 3-0. The supercharged Rams offense from the regular season was just nowhere to be found. Heading into the final quarter, the game was tied 3-3. Goff had an opportunity to give LA the lead, but missed Cooks running open on a go route to the end zone. Then, the Patriots scored the first touchdown of the game with seven minutes left. With just over six minutes remaining, the Rams were down seven. Goff led the Rams on a drive down to the Patriots 27 and came this close to throwing a touchdown to Cooks, which would have tied the game. But on the very next play, 
he did this, a terrible interception to Stefan Gilmore that pretty much lost the Rams the game. The criticism of Goff was loud after he completed just 50% of his passes in the big game. Despite his poor performance in the Super Bowl, the Rams signed Goff to a four-year extension before the start of the 2019 season. That year, for the first time in Goff's career, his numbers declined. His touchdowns that 2019 season dropped down to 22, the least he's thrown in his career since his rookie year, and he also had a career-high 16 interceptions. The team finished with their worst record since Goff's rookie season, going 9-7 and and missing the playoffs. There were questions about Goff entering the 2020 season. Was he a good quarterback or just propped up by Sean McVay's system? I quickly want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Underdog Fantasy. I love playing Underdog's Pick'em. I'm literally going to be playing pick them during every single one of the divisional games. This is an entry I already have submitted for this weekend. We'll see how it goes. But if you guys want to play pick them, sign up with my promo code SHEGOTSPORTS and they'll match your first deposit up to $100 and you'll get a free pick them entry, which is a player higher than half a yard. Golf struggles from the previous season continued in 2020. And after a week 12 loss versus the 49ers, things reached their boiling point in LA. After turning the ball over three times and not scoring a single touchdown, McVay called out Goff in front of the whole locker room after the game, reportedly shouting in his direction that he needs to play better and can't turn over the ball. Just a few minutes later in his post-game press conference, McVay said to the media, our quarterback has to take better care of the football. Communication between Goff and McVay during that 2020 season was apparently few and far between. The two didn't really talk in week 16, Goff broke his thumb and was ruled out for the final game of the regular season. John Wolford started in place of Goff and won versus the Cardinals. The Rams' 10-7 record was good enough to put them in the playoffs, and in the wildcard round, they were set to face off with the number three seed Seattle Seahawks. Despite Goff being medically cleared to play, McVay opted to start Wolford. But when he had to leave the game in the first quarter due to a neck injury, Goff was back under center. Jared didn't necessarily play well in that game, completing just nine of his 19 passes attempts, but he did throw a touchdown and didn't turn the ball over, which helped the Rams pull off the upset victory. LA then headed to Lambeau to take on the number one seed Packers in the divisional round. Despite Goff playing better in this one, completing 77% of his passes, the Rams couldn't pull off the upset and lost 32-18. to Just two weeks after that loss, everything changed for Jared Goff. He was blindsided when he found out the Rams had traded him two first round picks and a third round pick to the Lions for Matthew Stafford. It was clear the Rams felt like they couldn't win it all with Goff, so decided to give up a ton to land their new QB1. Looking back on it now, McVay has said Goff deserved better during the end of his time in LA and admits he could have handled the situation better. Sean shared he regrets not being able to look Jared in the eyes and tell him he would be traded in person. Once news broke about the blockbuster trade, many viewed Goff as a bridge quarterback in Detroit. The Lions were rebuilding and people believed they would be drafting a quarterback soon. But that's not the way Detroit's front office and coaching staff saw it. They brought in Jared to be their guy. Except things didn't go as planned right away. Goff's first season in Detroit was one of the worst of his career. Going from playing with talented vets like Cooper Cup, Brandon Cooks, and Robert Woods to a young rebuilding Lions roster most definitely had an impact on Goff. The team finished the season with a 3-13-1 record. 2022 was the second year of the Lions post-Matt Stafford rebuild. The team started the season going 1-4, but after their week 6 bye, the Lions finished the year with an 8-4 record in including a week 18 win at Lambeau to keep the Packers out of the playoffs. Goff had sneaky good numbers that season too. For the first time since 2019, he threw for over 4,000 yards. He also had 29 touchdowns, which was the second most in his career, and just seven interceptions, which tied a career low for him. So how did Goff have one of the best seasons of his career with a roster that was not nearly as talented as any of the Rams teams he was on? Basically, because he was given control of the offense. In LA, the Rams would go no huddle a lot, so McVay could see how the defense lined up and then tell Goff through his helmet what play to run once he was at the line of scrimmage. But in Detroit, Goff was given full control of the offense. He could make changes pre-snap and wasn't forced to run whatever play his coach called in. Many had hoped the Lions could have one of their best seasons in a long time as the 2023 preseason rolled around. But not a lot of people expected them to pull off an upset versus the reigning Super Bowl champion Chiefs in the first game of the season. The Lions went on 
on to finish the year with a 12-5 record, making it the second time in the history of the organization that the team won 12 games. As we all know, the NFL script for the playoffs was just so on point for this year that the Lions hosted the Rams in the first round. And as we all saw, Goff got his revenge versus the Rams, completing 81% of his passes for 277 yards and one touchdown to help the Lions win their first playoff game in over 30 years. Goff has totally revived his career in Detroit and has proved he isn't just a product of McVay's system. With the teams left in the NFC, the Lions have a legit chance to make it to the NFC Championship game and maybe, possibly, the Super Bowl for the first time in the team's history.